Hello everybody, my name is Fita, I hope you're well and welcome or welcome back to my channel. You probably already know what this is all about, so let's get started with a simple explanation of how things will work. We're gonna think of our weapon as having two possible states, aiming and not aiming. Depending on the current state, we're going to change its position and rotation as well as control the zoom of the camera and perhaps display some scope UI. To control the camera's zoom, we're going to be adjusting its field of view with higher FOV values, meaning lower zoom values, and vice versa. To display or hide the scope graphics, we're just gonna toggle some UI images visibility. And lastly, we're going to have an animator component with a blended tree that is going to interpolate between some resting position for a weapon, for example, having it on the side, and some other aiming position, exemplary gratia, in the middle of the screen. To do so, we're going to interpolate a blend value between 0 and 1 and tweak all the parameters that we're interested in according to it. In Unity, I'm gonna parent the camera to a player object that I will be controlling with the script made for my previous first-person shooter tutorial. I will create a new empty child for the camera that will represent the hand of our player and add a new child to this object that will contain the graphics of the weapon. I didn't feel like making a whole video about guns so I will personally be using a low-poly banana. After that, I'll add an animator component to the camera and create a new animator controller asset to set as its controller. Then, let's create two new animation clips for the aiming and not aiming state of the weapon and let them be empty for now. Double-click on the animator controller to bring up the animator window. First thing first, let's rename the default parameter to something meaningful to us, like aiming, and then right-click to create a new state and select from new blend tree. Double-click on the newly created blend tree state, go to the inspector and clicking on the small plus button add two new motion fields. Then set the first one to our not aiming clip and the second one to the aiming one. After that, again, go to the tool menu, window, and open the animation window. With the camera selected in the hierarchy, tinker around with the hand objects transform until you have both your aiming and not aiming clips ready. The reason why I'm using the hand object instead of the weapon is that if I later decide to add more guns or items to my game, I just need to adjust their local position instead of having to create two new whole animations for each of them. We're all set with the game scene, so let's now create a new c -sharp script, I'll call mine simplegun.cs, and let's open it in our text editor of choice. The first fields I'll declare are a public reference to the animator and a string that will store the name of the parameter that the animator will use to blend between the two states. Then, we'll add a reference to the camera that we'll be tweaking the field of view of, and let's also add two floats to store the default FOV for when we are not aiming and the one for when we are. Then, we need the float to control the duration of the animation or transition from one state to the other. Lastly, I'll create a bool that will tell the weapon if it's supposed to display a scope UI when aiming and also two references to the mesh render of the weapon and the UI game object that will have the scope graphics. The majority of the behavior will take place inside a curtain that I'll call aim and that requires a bool argument to be passed to it. As of now, it might look quite intimidating, but fear not and follow me. At the top, we'll declare two floats, blend value, that will store the progress of our animation, and time elapsed, that will simply keep track of how much time has passed since the animation has started. The first thing we'll do, as some sort of preparation for the aiming process, is make sure that if our weapon has the scope graphics enabled, the mesh renderer is enabled and the UI overlay is not active in the hierarchy. We're going to switch them at the end. Then we declare a while loop that will run until the time elapsed will be lesser than the aim speed. The first thing we'll do in the loop is calculate the progress of the animation by setting blend value to time elapsed over aim speed. Then we'll check if the player is aiming, which means that they have pressed the aim button in the game or not. They have lifted the finger off the screen. At every iteration of the loop, 
If the player is aiming, we'll set our float animator parameter equal to blend value with the animator set float method, and we'll interpolate the camera's field of view between the default and the aiming one, with a progress of 1 minus blend value. This is because we want the FOV to actually decrease in zooming and increase when not. If the player is not aiming instead, we'll just reverse the operations. We'll set the animator parameter to 1 minus blend value and interpolate the camera's FOV between the same two values but with the parameter blend value. The last thing we'll do in the loop is make sure it does not run forever, so we'll increase time elapsed by time.delta time, which is the duration of each frame of our game, and end it with the yield return null command, since we are operating within a coroutine. At the end of the loop, if enable scope is true, then we'll set the enable state of the weapon renderer to not is aiming, so if the player is aiming, the weapon renderer will be disabled, and vice versa. In a similar manner, we'll set the active state of the scope overlay to is aiming. Then the last thing we want to do is make sure that the animator parameter and camera field of view are the exact values that we want. So if the player is aiming, we'll set the animator parameter to 1 and the field of view to aiming, FOV. And if the player is not aiming, we'll set the animator parameter to 0 and the field of view to default FOV. Since this is a coroutine and we want to be able to call it from outside the script when the player is pressing a button, we need to create a new public void function that requires a boolean argument. Inside of it, we'll just stop all the currently running coroutines and then start in coroutine passing the same boolean argument. Inside of the start method, since weapon renderer and scope overlay are only supposed to be used when enable scope is true, if either one of the two is not assigned, then I will set enable scope to false to avoid any errors in the future. Now, back in the editor, in case you want your weapon to have some sniper like scope, add a new UI canvas as a child of the weapon object, the banana in my case, and select your UI graphics. I'll have an image stretching all over the screen, but that heavily depends on your design. Then, let's add our simple gun script to the player and give the various fields some values. Make sure the animator parameter value is the same you chose for, as the name suggests, the parameter of the animator controller, and if not, do so. Then, set all the other fields as I'm doing or experiment a little for yourself and see what gives you the best result. The last thing we'll need to prepare is a new UI canvas where we'll have our aim button or trigger. I'm using an image to which I'll add an event trigger component, then I'll add two new event types, on pointer up and on pointer down, and I'll add the same listener to both of them the onAim method from the simple gun script. Make sure that the boolean argument is set to true for the onPointer down event and to false for the onPointer up one. Okay, this has been a wild ride but we are here. So let's now hit the play button and see if everything works correctly. In play mode, pressing the aim button will start blending from the not aiming to the aiming state and along with the weapon's position, you can see that the zoom is also increasing. Lifting the finger will then cause things to go back to the default state. And if you enable the scope UI, you will also see it pop up and replace the gun model. Increasing the aim speed will cause it to go slower. That makes me realize that speed was a bad naming choice on my part, but you get the point. Lastly, while I suggest you leave the default FOV to your game's camera's default FOV. Playing around with the aiming one will give you different zooming levels. What I've shown in this tutorial is obviously very basic and you will probably want to adapt or expand the code to your game's needs. If you do so, feel free to leave a feedback or your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and perhaps subscribing to my channel. This said, I've been Pita and if you decide to stick around, see you next time.